Hey folks, John here, I'll take Reforge. Welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome. So what's going on today, I'm out here in the workshop and we're getting moving on a project I've been wanting to do for quite a while. We're gonna be making a tool called a Picaroon. So if you wanna check it out, stick around. If you don't know what a Picaroon is, I don't blame you, it's not a super common tool. Basically just imagine an ax, but instead of a blade, you have kind of a point with a hook coming off the end. And it's a tool specifically for moving lumber, in this case, firewood. Uh, you know, here in the mountains of Western North Carolina, it's starting to get cold, leaves are falling. It's about time to fill up the woodshed and start firing up the wood stove. And you know, I've got two herniated discs in my back, so bending over, picking up a million pieces of firewood kind of sucks. So this is a tool that's gonna be really handy for me. I've already kind of gotten started on this project. I've got a couple of billets of 4140 tool steel squared up and ready to go. I need a full size axe eye on these and I wasn't super happy with my last large axe eye drift so I went ahead and made a new one and then while I was at it I decided to go ahead and make a new small one for like hatchets and boys axes and things like that. Then I realized I could use some stubby drifts and then I realized a lot of the tooling that I had for the press kind of sucked in regards to axe making so I kind of went on a tool making bender the past few days but now we're actually ready to get started boys. First things first we're just going to mark the eye don't need to go very deep right here. So this is my first time using this punching die that I made for doing axe eyes. And I made it very, very thin to uh, kind of minimize loss of material. So I'm kind of just taking my time, working my way through the billet nice and slow, using plenty of charcoal color to help keep it from getting stuck. You know, once we get the punch bottomed out, we'll turn it over, punch from the other side, and hopefully have a nice clean hole. Tell it to it, really. You punch work like a charm. We got good clean holes, and the next step is to start forming these into axe eyes. Now that we got our whole punch, we'll start with the, uh, the small starting drift. So we're still just working on enlarging the eye using our bigger starting drift. Now, I quickly figured out that this is something that I need to figure out how to do using the press. Because once you've gotten started, you know, you can turn it over and knock your drift out like that. It's a piece of cake, but those first couple of heats where it's getting stuck halfway through, getting the drift out really, really sucks. So I need to figure out a way to make up some dies like a bolster block and a drifting die to do that in one motion. All right, so we got both our stubby drifts ran all the way through. I'm definitely going to be making some more dies for the press to be able to do that a little faster and a little more user friendly. But the next step is to bang in our handheld drift and start spreading out the cheeks. Another two, really. The first few steps in the forging process are done. What I like to do next is remove some excess material and tidy up the billet. So we're going to cut the top of the piece off flush and generally kind of dress up the shape a little bit to just save us some trouble forging. You know, here's an axe billet I randomly had on my workbench that I've done it to. So you kind of see what it is we're trying to accomplish. And back in the fire we go. transition from the, uh, the eye to the spiky bit. We got the spikes drawn out. Now we'll just run the drift back through the eye. And kind of try to straighten everything up before we hit the grinder. All right, so we spent some time in front of the sander, removed a lot of the excess material and weight, as well as kind of just generally tidied up the profile and brought everything closer to its finished dimensions. The next step is to heat these guys up, take the block brush to them to get the marks from the sander out and get us a nice soft black finish, and then bend these working ends into their final shape. That'll do it, really. You know, 
kind of like that. I'm, I'm sure there's a reason for it because almost every example I've seen looks just about like that, so that's what I'm going to do. going to do a quick kind of field expedient temper. What I've done is clean up the points a little bit so I can see temper colors. I've set the back in the forge and we'll just let those heat up nice and slow and once I see about a you know straw brown or so on the ends we'll be good to go. And now we're just going to hang these on a good quality hickory axe handle. Alright we got some wood glue on our wedge. Uh, we're going to use the upsetting block of the anvil. I just drive that guy on home. A lot of times with pickaroons, you'll see people put a pin or a rivet or something in the head. I've never understood that, so I'm not going to do it. So if you've been watching the whole video wondering what in the world this thing is actually for, I'll give you a quick demonstration right quick. Say there's a piece of wood I want over here. I can grab it, move it over here. We'll give it a quick split. And then I can grab it, pull it back towards me, keep splitting it, put it in a wheelbarrow, move it to the shed, you know, whatever you want to do. Also real handy for just digging through the wood pile in general, you know, pulling things towards you. Not having to bend over, pick things up, worry about getting bit by a snake or nothing like that. You get the idea. So if you didn't know what a pickaroon is or what they're for, now you do. I made two of these, as you saw. That was actually my neighbor's wood pile we were filming out a minute ago. Uh, he had a bunch of trees brought down earlier in the year, and he's got more firewood that he's going to be able to use before it starts to rot. So he told me to go ahead and take what I needed for the winter, and as a thank you, I made him one of these. But super handy tool to have around if you move a lot of firewood. Uh, my back's really going to thank me for making this thing. But anyway, that's all I got for you. If you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Always more cool stuff coming. As always, we're sponsored by Lazy K Knife Supply. Discount codes in the description as well as the pinned comment for some discounts and some top shelf handle material. And uh, y'all take care.